Hello coders, welcome back to the Joy of Code. This is Michael again. Today, actually, for the occasion, in my Greenfoot t-shirt. Um, very fitting for what we're going to do. Uh, what I will talk about today is a bit of cleanup. That is, you know, th um, explaining some concepts that we have encountered in passing, but not really explained. So it is about concepts that you have seen in the code, but where I have not provided the full explanation. And now I think we are ready to understand a bit deeper what it's going to be. Uh, what I'm talking about today is the difference between instance methods and class methods, or in Java they're also called static methods. Um, so let's have a look at the code that we have seen before. Here's our um, bouncy ball example. Um, you have seen that in the last episodes. Here's our balls bouncing around. Um, let's have a look at the code. Um, specifically, we want to have a look at method calls. So if you look here into our code, what kinds of method calls we have in here, um, we have actually three different kinds of method calls that we have encountered. There is method calls like this one, at world edge. Um, the way it looks like syntactically is there's just the name of the method and a parameter list, that is a pair of round brackets, that may or may not have anything in between them. Um, that is called an internal method call. An internal method call is one that calls a method that is defined in the same class or inherited from the superclass. So here the at world edge method is um, defined in the same class. If you scroll down here, here is actually the definition for this method. So this one when this at world edge is encountered in execution, actually just jumps down here, executes this bit of code, and when it gets to the end, jumps back up here. So that is what's called an internal method call. It's internal because the method that we're calling is in the same class. Then let's have a look at this class here. The, the other second kind of method calls that we've seen are external method calls. External method calls is something like here, mouse.getx or greenfoot get mouse info. So these are also method calls. Getx method is called, the get mouse info method is called. But these are external method calls, that is, the methods we're calling here are not in the current class that we're in here, they are somewhere else in a different class. And now, so external method calls always have what's called a receiver. You know, um, who, are we, uh, um, who are we calling this method on? And a dot, and then the method name. So external method calls always have this dot notation. So they have the method name after the dot. And who are we invoking the method on before the dot? Okay, that far, that is reasonably straightforward. Now comes the tricky bit. The bit before the dot here is actually sometimes an object and sometimes a class. And this difference, uh, whether we have a class or an object before the dot, we have very much glossed over before and, and not talked about it at all. Um, syntactically, we can in Java recognize that often because Java, uh, in Java classes start with a capital letter, such as Greenfoot, and objects start with a lowercase letter. Java unfortunately does not enforce this. This is just by convention. Um, but all the methods in the Java library and in the Greenfoot libraries stick to this convention. So when you see Greenfoot methods, you can always be sure. For your own um, naming, it is up to you to make sure that this is true. For example, here, the word mouse, I've, which is my mouse info object, I have named that variable myself just up here and I have made sure that I used a lowercase letter here to stick to this convention. You could screw that up and, and you know, use a um, uppercase letter here, or you could, in your own classes that you define, start with a lowercase letter. The Java system will not stop you from doing this, but you will confuse every other Java programmer. So don't do that. Always name classes with a capital methods and variables with lowercase. And then here, you always know if there's a capital at the beginning. Here, I'm calling a method on a class. There, I'm calling a method on an object. So what we're seeing here is that both classes and objects can have methods. So here, I've got my classes over here on the right. 
for example I have a ball class and here are my ball objects. Most of the time we have invoked methods on objects. For example I can click on this object and I can here um, call the change image method. Um, so there I'm calling a method on an object and if I go to the class there actually is no other method other than the constructor which is a very specialized thing. Um, some classes have methods and they would appear here. Now the normal case is that methods belong to objects and these are then called instance methods. Instance methods because instance is a synonym for object. So if I have an instance method that's a method of the object and almost all methods that we have seen, for example the act method here, is an instance method. Um, if you write your methods in the way that we have seen it so far in all of the examples you are always writing instance methods and you get the instance methods which means to invoke those methods you first need an object of a class and then you invoke the method on that object. There are only some very special cases where you have class methods. Uh, there are some classes where it does not make sense to create instances and the Greenfoot class is such a class. Um, that is a special case in some sense. The Greenfoot class um, refers to the Greenfoot system in itself and it doesn't really make much sense to create a, a second or third or fourth instance of Greenfoot because you cannot actually from your Greenfoot program create multiple Greenfoot environments. That is not possible. That's why the Greenfoot class does not allow you to create instances because you cannot have multiple instances of the Greenfoot environment that you just create programmatically. So in the Greenfoot class the methods are all written in a way that they belong to the class itself and you do not have instances. Now let's look at the documentation and see how we can actually find that out. Um, if we go to the Greenfoot API documentation and we look at the Greenfoot class, here's the class Greenfoot, and we look at the, uh, the list of methods. Actually class methods and instance methods, is methods are all listed here in the same table. The way we can distinguish them is by the word static in front of the method. If there is the word static in front of a method declaration then this is a class method rather than an instance method. Um, that's why in Java class methods are often just called static methods as well. That comes from this keyword static. So if someone talks about static methods that's the same as a class method. That is a method that belongs to the class rather than belonging to an object. If we look carefully through the list of methods in the Greenfoot class we see in fact in the Greenfoot class all the methods are static. If we look at the actor class and we look at those methods none of the methods are static. So in the actor class they are all instance methods. All the methods in the actor class you invoke on instances of class actor not on the class itself whereas in the Greenfield class all of the methods you invoke on the class rather than the objects. In practice this can be mixed. There can be classes that has, have some static methods and some instance methods. That is perfectly legal and there are some rare cases where that is used. In the Greenfoot API it is strictly separated. The Greenfoot class has only static methods and all of the other classes have only instance methods. So no static here. Which means in practice only when you call Greenfoot classes do you have a class name in front of the dot and for every other class this whatever is before the dot, dot needs to be referenced to an object and very often it is a variable holding the object. Sometimes it is a method call returning the object. But this is really the the difference. Because we have if we wanted to write a class method ourselves, we would have to write the keyword static in front of the method definition. We don't do that right now. It is does not happen very often that we need that. So this is just now for you to understand why sometimes you're writing a class name in front of the um, method call and sometimes you have an object in front of the method call. If you're not sure look at the documentation, check whether the method is static or not. Every method is either static or it isn't and that tells you whether it expects before the dot a class 
or an object. In Greenfoot, as I said before, only the Greenfoot class has static methods. All other methods are object methods. Okay, that's it for today. Just a bit of theory this time without actually doing anything new constructive. In the next video, we get going again with actual programming. See you next time.